Mike Florio, uh, co-host of Pro Football Talk Live, profootballtalk.com, kind enough to join us. Uh, Mike, uh, according to your report, Gronk, uh, according to a source, a 40% chance that he'd be coming back uh, to play with the Patriots. I'm curious if that's if that's up from like 30% or is that down from 50% or down from 100%? Yeah, I, I think if anything, the trend is toward Gronk being inclined once the game starts, Dan, once he sees the train roll on without him, getting that itch, the question is, will he scratch it? And I think the most significant thing I was told yesterday about Gronk, the idea that if Tom Brady at some point picks up the phone and makes a direct appeal to Gronk to come back, that that could be the thing that pushes it over the top. And we know how the Patriots tend to struggle early in the season. We've seen them slump relative to their usual standards through September from time to time. You've got a lot of transition in the receiving core, and maybe Tom Brady gets sufficiently exasperated after three or four weeks that he does make that phone call to Gronk. What will Gronk say if it happens? And I think it's all to be determined because we don't know how Gronk's going to feel when the regular season starts. And most importantly, he doesn't know how he's going to feel until the regular season starts. Running back salaries is always an issue, uh, you know, and, 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 we're trying to figure out their value and how do you pay them commensurate to what they do for a team or what they mean to a team. And I, I don't know if there is an answer to that, but you were talking about Zeke Elliott, uh, you know, might be holding out. Melvin Gordon might be holding out. Le'Veon Bell, I don't know if he's the anomaly or he's the trend here. Where are we going with running back salaries? Well, here's the problem with running backs, especially guys who are taken in the first round because you've got that fifth-year option, which delays their opportunity to get to the open market. For the most part, the team gets the maximum performance that anyone's ever going to get out of that running back in those first several years of his rookie contract. So then when the time comes to pay him, the question is, is he going to keep playing like he has, or are we paying him big money for the downward slide of his career, either because of one specific injury or just the accumulation of wear and tear that a guy goes through when he's touching the ball 20 to 25 per game, so, uh, per game over the course of a 16-game season. And, and it's hard to find that sweet spot. And I think that's why it's smart that Ezekiel Elliott is taking a stand now because if he waits another year or two, two more years, his rookie contract expires and nothing keeps the Cowboys from doing to him what they did to DeMarco Murray. DeMarco Murray finished his rookie contract with uh, a franchise record in single-season rushing yards. He led the NFL in rushing. And the Cowboys said, see you later. And he went and signed with the Philadelphia Eagles. So I, I think that the key is, while you are still at your maximum level of output, find that moment where you say, I want my money. Give me my money. Chris Johnson did that with the Titans in 2011. I think Melvin Gordon's overplaying his hand. He's not a truly special running back. There's a small handful at any given time of truly special running back. Elliott is still that. He needs to get paid while he still falls into that category because whether it's one year, two years, three years, I mean, look at Todd Gurley. A year ago, he was one of the special backs. Now he's not because of that need problem. It can happen quickly, so you need to take a stand and get paid while you can. Will Dak Prescott, Zeke Elliott, and Amari Cooper all get paid in Dallas? This year, I think it's going to be difficult to pay all three of them. They're going to have to really do some creative things under the salary cap. And, and I think teams have more freedom than they would admit under the salary cap to make things work. Sometimes they just don't feel like making it work. They don't feel like finding a way to spend the money. They don't feel like going to 10 different veterans and trying to create cap space that way. If they really want to do it, they can. But, I mean, the problem is Cooper and Prescott are the two who are due to be free agents next year. Elliott's got two years left, and the Cowboys have kind of hoped to finesse this where they could wait on Elliott. If Elliott pushes this thing to a head, they're going to have to let either Cooper or Prescott play out that rookie contract. And if mm. they let both play out the rookie contract, Dan – you can only use a franchise tag on one of them next year. The other one's going to get market value somewhere. The NFL floated the idea of 18-game schedule. Uh, I've heard uh, 17 games uh, might be a better option. Maybe there's uh, added playoff uh, spots here. But, you know, when there's money, uh, big money at stake here, then you know, I throw logic out the window. So wh where do you think things are going to stand when this season starts with the possibility of an 18-game schedule in the near future? Well, I, I, I'd be shocked if there's a new collective bargaining agreement in place before the start of the season. I just don't think it's practical. Now the players have some leverage 
as it relates to getting the thing done by the start of the regular season, or at least having an agreement in principle, and, and they'd be wise to find a way to use it. But they really have leverage on the NFL's obsession with expanding the regular season, whether it's 18 right away, whether it's 17 for a while, and then 18. I think the NFL is determined to do it. The one thing the NFLPA has done incredibly well, Dan, they have created the impression that they're just not interested. You're talking about poker faces. Mm -hmm. The NFLPA has the ultimate poker face on expanding the regular season because we don't want it. No, we don't want it. We don't want it. We don't want it. And I think at some point what the NFL is going to do is make the NFLPA an offer they can't refuse. And I've had people say, well, the NFLPA should ask for this. They should ask for this. No, don't ask for anything. We don't want it. And, And you change our mind. And if you eventually put something on the table that changes our mind, so be it. But we don't want it. And, and uh, that gives them a hell of a lot of power. And we'll see if the NFL ever makes them an offer that they truly can't refuse. But I think that's the way they need to play it. That's the way they've been playing it. And they're putting themselves in a position to really get a significant amount of money to agree to expanding the regular season. I just think it's a matter of time until the NFL makes that type of an offer. But when you're saying, you know, the answer is no – and that's what I, I was told, that it's absolutely no, that there's no way that the Players Union is going to take an 18-game uh, regular season schedule. But I, is it just money? Is, is that the one thing that you can give to these players then? Could you, could you say, we want contracts guaranteed? Well, here's the thing about guaranteed contracts. Keep this in mind. If you guaranteed all NFL contracts, there would be no NFL contracts longer than three years, and most of them would be one year or two years. You're not going to sign – a quarterback to a six-year fully guaranteed contract because what if come year four, he's no good. You're stuck with him. So look at the Vikings. They got a three-year fully guaranteed contract with Kirk Cousins that they may really want to tear up after this season, but they're not going to be able to do it. So shorter contracts mm-hmm. will, will be what happens. And maybe that's good for the players. Maybe shorter contracts are better. You get back to free agency sooner instead of being caught on the back end of a non-guaranteed deal that gives the team all the power. But then I think terms like a shorter path to free agency right out of the gates, three years instead of four years. Um, you know, those, those are the kind of terms unrelated to money. The, the split of the money between ownership and the players that could get the attention of the NFLPA. Expanded rosters would be a necessity if you're going to play 18 games. How many roster spots are there going to be? Yeah, and, again, and again, I wouldn't negotiate if I was the players. I would just, they, they, they've sold everyone on the idea that they don't want 18 games. So we, don't, we absolutely positively don't want 18 games until the moment we decide – We'll take 18 games because you've made us an offer between money and roster spots and pathway to free agency and whatever else the NFL feels compelled to throw on the pile to get this 18-game schedule that they so clearly want. Uh, one more item. Let me circle back to Ezekiel Elliott because, you know, I, I, I know Jerry Jones is just desperate for that one more Super Bowl and he's going to take, you know, do whatever he can to, to get this done. I'm just surprised that... Zeke, what kind of leverage does he have two years out to say that he wants a new deal as opposed to, and given what's happened in the offseason and troubles that he's had, like why am I acquiescing to him two years out? Because Jerry Jones desperately wants to win another Super Bowl because Jerry Jones lived through the Emmett Smith situation in 1993 when he held out into the regular season. The Cowboys lost the first two games. Jerry Jones caved. And then the Cowboys became the first team in NFL history to start 0-2 and win the Super Bowl. So the, the, the blueprint's there. And Elliot and, and Stephen Jones was on PSC Live with me right after the draft, and we talked about the timetable for Elliot's deal. And he said, Ezekiel Elliott is the straw that stirs our drink. Okay, well, then you got to pay him. you got to pay him before these other guys. And, and that's the other reason why Elliot should take a stand now, Dan. Pay attention to what's going on with the offense in Dallas. They have Kellen Moore as the coordinator. They're going to make the offense much more dynamic and creative than it ever has been. Maybe a year from now, it's more about Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper than it is about Ezekiel Elliott. This year, though, it's still about Elliott. And now going into this season, Elliot, I think it's the perfect time for him to take a stand mm. because Jerry Jones is desperate to win, because the offense still goes through him. He's still the straw that stirs the drink. They may have a different straw next year. So now's the time to get that straw paid because, again, by, look, look, I'll go back to Todd Gurley. If the, the Rams would never give Todd Gurley now the deal they gave him a year ago. They were, the, Gurley and his people were smart to get the deal that they got when they did because one year can change everything for a running back, and that's why Elliott needs to take that stand. Thank you, Mike, as always. We appreciate your time. All right. Good talking to you, Dan. That's uh, Mike Florio, co-host of Pro Football Talk Live, profootballtalk.com. 
For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV, stream for free on BR Live, or download the Dan Patrick Show app.